Chapter 24 Making a Miracle Joe and Karen fell into step with one another immediately. They traded blows as they circled each other, moving gracefully around their makeshift arena. The light of their auras intermingled, sending bolts of plasma firing in all directions, scorching the ground wherever they stepped. An onlooker would not have been able to tell, as the two young women moved so quickly that they could barely be seen, but they had grown accustomed to each other's movements. Neither of them landed a single blow as they fell into something resembling a dance, and Joe, at least, was enjoying every moment of it. Joe would have liked the fight to go on until neither opponent could fight anymore, and she would have been content if they had fought to a draw. It still surprised her, and Joe wasn't the kind of person to accept a tie. She had always been the most competitive person she knew. If she liked someone, she was even more competitive with them. So why did she feel this way about Karen? Why was her first concern in such an important fight to keep her opponent engaged for as long as possible? Why was she so desperate to keep her opponent around, and why did she get the distinct feeling that her opponent reciprocated her desire? Joe did like Karen. She had realized that prior to her laughing fit earlier, and didn't intend to try to deny it. She wondered briefly as she wove back and forth around each of her opponent's strikes if she was worried about hurting Karen, because she liked her, but she dismissed that quickly. She didn't even worry about hurting her sister or her best friend. She knew Karen's soul would protect its wielder from serious harm. Besides, Karen had started this fight. She had chosen to make herself a threat. She didn't deserve that kind of consideration in the first place. Joe knew that. Even more than she was competitive, she was the kind of person who refused to show consideration to anyone who didn't deserve it. Joe mulled over all of this, dividing her attention between the fight and her thoughts. Thanks to Wilson's training, that didn't get her immediately knocked out, but she still wondered why Karen hadn't pushed her any further when she certainly could. Was Karen going easy on her? Did she feel similarly to Joe? It was an interesting question, but it was one that Joe couldn't know the answer to. Asking it, though, was just the nudge Joe needed. The question sounded ridiculous to her. This girl, regardless of what else she was, was Joe's enemy. Joe had to win. She had to defeat this person, not just for her own sake, but for the sake of her friends. As far as Joe knew, they needed her help. So, despite the fact that she still ached from the numerous injuries that her recent explosion of energies hadn't healed, Joe turned all of her focus toward doing her opponent harm. Giving up her chance to block, she threw punch after kick, aiming for even the smallest openings in her opponent's guard, even as she twisted around her opponent's strikes. Joe looked into her opponent's eyes. The moment that she had redoubled her attack, she saw disappointment there, sparkling behind her chocolate brown irises. For only a moment, Joe took this as a sign that Karen couldn't keep up with her anymore so late in the heart to heart, but then Karen stopped defending and held her ground. Joe's fists and feet tore through her, but met no resistance. And a moment later, too quickly for Joe to even register what was happening, Joe was struck from behind. Once again, Karen had created an illusion and switched places with it instantly to avoid an attack. This time, though, she had created her illusion at, and therefore moved herself to, a place that was still within reach of her opponent. Joe stumbled forward. She turned quickly and threw a sweeping kick at her opponent, but her attack once again passed through Karen's torso. It was another illusion. This time, Joe had just enough time to start to wonder where her opponent was before she was hit from behind once again. This time, Karen struck low, sweeping Joe's feet out from beneath her. She fell backward, her gaze snapping upward in time to see a new Karen pop into existence above her. Before Joe could coax her body into reacting, the new Karen dropped and drove her fist into Joe's gut. Joe was thrown the rest of the way to the ground, hard enough to displace the ground where she landed. Pain exploded throughout her body as her left shoulder strained in its socket, and she had to stifle a cry. A split second later, the Karen who had just struck Joe faded away, revealing another Karen higher in the air, directly behind her. This Karen dropped as well, and drove her fist into Joe's torso a second time. The force of the impact was enough to compress the earth beneath Joe and drive her further into the dirt. Joe gasped. Pain exploded throughout her body as, once again, Karen faded from view. This time, Joe expected to see Karen reappear behind her illusion, prepared to strike again. She even braced herself to defend this time, to make her best effort to deflect her opponent's attack and break herself free of this cycle. Sure enough, when the illusion disappeared, it revealed that Karen had repositioned herself behind it, except that this time she had moved herself to a place high in the air, well out of Joe's reach. Joe was surprised, hesitating to react. That gave Karen all the time she needed to unleash the next phase of her attack. Karen held her hands in front of her chest, one above the other, their palms a few inches apart. Soul crackled along her body and down her arms, collecting in the space between her hands. A silvery orb formed there, swelling to the size of a grapefruit, then the size of a basketball, 
and then it burst, breaking into dozens of bolts of silvery light that rained down on Joe like some kind of explosive hail. From above, Karen's attack appeared to hit its mark. The little bolts of soul exploded against Joe's entire body as well as the earth immediately surrounding her, kicking up and filling the air with a cloud of debris. Karen couldn't see her opponent, but she knew full well that this attack was the equivalent of half a dozen of her illusion barrage techniques. As resilient as Joe was, she simply couldn't continue to fight after taking it so directly. Not at her level, not with the injuries that she had already sustained. Karen knew this, and yet as she continued to fall, she couldn't help but worry that this heart-to-heart -heart still wasn't over. She watched the cloud of debris thinning with each passing second, hoping that this fight had finally come to an end. Instead, she was startled when the cloud dispersed, displaced by Joe as she launched herself upward to meet her opponent in the air. Karen was shocked. She didn't react in time to guard against Joe's outstretched fist. Joe swung upward, punching Karen in the gut hard enough to cancel her downward momentum completely. Then she cried out in defiance and threw her weight, her aura helping to propel her, and she flipped in midair, kicking Karen in the face, launching her like a comet toward the ground below. There was no way for Karen to reorient herself for a soft landing. She was simply falling too fast. Joe knew that. And yet she also knew that Karen would not crash, that she would, somehow, land safely. Sure enough, just before Joe landed lightly at the edge of the massive trench dug by Karen's recent barrage, Karen's falling form disappeared. Joe, breathing heavily but unwilling to allow that to slow her down, looked around, trying to find where Karen had moved herself to at the last second. She found her opponent standing directly behind her, breathing just as heavily but showing far fewer injuries. Karen looked Joe over carefully. Joe was hurt. She was dirty and bruised, the frayed black overshirt that she had worn to the battle, even more tattered now than it had been before. She was barely able to stay upright. Her left arm hung limp at her side as if her shoulder were dislocated. She had taken the full brunt of Karen's two punches, backed by the full force of Karen's aura, but she didn't show any signs of damage from Karen's soul attack. Somehow, Joe had avoided it completely, even in her weakened state, and Karen had no idea how she had done it. How? Karen asked. She didn't need to say anything else. Joe knew right away what her opponent was asking. Joe shook her head. She scrutinized Karen as Karen had scrutinized her. She seemed much better off than her opponent. Her aura still churned around her, just as Joe's did. But Joe couldn't help but notice that that aura looked erratic, as if it were about to collapse. Joe had never seen Karen struggle to maintain her aura. Could it be that despite her outward appearance, Karen was also on her last leg? Was that too much for Joe to hope? I don't really know, Joe replied, the idea that she might withhold the answer from Karen never once crossing her mind. I knew I couldn't let that soul spray of yours hit me, so I tried to shadow step. Somehow it worked, even though I wasn't in the shadow of anything, and I was able to slip out of the direct path of your attack at the very last second and leave behind a latent image. I can't explain it. Well, Karen told her, speaking just as candidly as Joe had, I admit it, you surprised me. It's not as if that attack is impossible to avoid, but I never expected that you would be able to do it. Joe was taken aback by that. The way Karen said it, she almost sounded like she was belittling Joe and her abilities. She felt as if she'd been punched right in the heart. Enemy or not, she never expected that Karen would talk to her that way. Why? Joe stammered. You really don't know, do you? Karen asked, sounding genuinely disappointed. She shook her head, exasperated. When you powered up back there, I thought you'd figured it out. That you were finally going to start taking this fight seriously. I even gave you the chance to show it, back when we started fighting again. But instead, you barely moved as fast as you did in our first heart-to-heart, -heart, even when you pushed yourself. She looked away from Joe, unable to meet her eyes. I thought that you were... She began, and then she stopped herself, saying, I thought that you actually had what it took to give me a challenge. Joe was speechless. Why was Karen lying like this? Was it to get to her? To cause her to make a mistake? Joe was already nearing the limits of her stamina. Karen had proved that she could outmaneuver her with relative ease. What need did she have to psych Joe out? Of course Joe was taking the fight seriously. Of course she was moving faster than she had in their previous heart-to-heart. The narrowed gap between the two of them and their movements was proof of that. In their first fight, Karen had made a joke of Joe and her attacks. Even Shadow Step hadn't been enough to outmaneuver her. Here, the two of them were mostly evenly matched even when Joe couldn't use Shadow Step at all. I Joe began, but she didn't actually know what she wanted to say. She stared blankly at Karen, who let out a deep sigh. Without another word, Karen took up a ready stance. Joe shifted in place. She meant to step into her back stance, or the closest that she could come with her dislocated arm, but she didn't, and she wasn't sure why. Meanwhile, somewhere around 20 more Karens flickered into existence, each of them taking up a slightly different stance than the original. Joe knew that the real Karen would have immediately swapped places with one of her semi-solid illusions to protect herself, 
She also knew that she wouldn't be able to change to her healing aura in order to identify which Karen was the real one in time to do anything about it. In the fraction of a second before Karen could launch the second illusion barrage of the fight, the entire world seemed to slow to a crawl, at least from Joe's perspective. Her mind was working at 1,000 miles per hour. How had this happened? How had Karen so completely outclassed her yet again? Karen was an amazing fighter, that wasn't in question. But Joe had worked harder than she ever had to ensure that this wouldn't happen a second time. Had Karen somehow been holding back so much in their first fight that none of Joe's training mattered? It was the only explanation that made sense, and yet something didn't add up. As far as Joe could tell, Karen hadn't lied to her once since the two had first met. She had tricked and deceived Joe during battle to gain an advantage, but not one word out of her mouth had been a lie. Joe was sure of that, unless Karen was a world-class actress. The point was, Joe trusted Karen, despite everything that had happened, despite whether she should have or not, and Karen had told her flat out that she hadn't improved at all. The group of Karens moved to attack as Joe came to a realization. No, she thought. She didn't say I didn't improve. It sounded more like she thinks I'm holding back for some reason. But I'm not. Yet even as Joe told herself that, she didn't believe it. Her first heart-to-heart -heart played out in her mind, and she did remember Karen moving faster and more efficiently in that fight than she had in this one. But Joe wasn't holding back. She didn't have any reason to, and she had every reason not to. What would even make her want to hold back in the first place? The thought crossed Joe's mind, and memories flashed before her eyes. She remembered the first time that she had seen Karen, recalling how her eyes had been drawn to the shape of the other girl's body. She remembered Karen's confident smile, and how unreasonably hurt she had been when Karen had finally explained what she and her allies wanted. For some reason, Joe's most recent nightmare, where the darkness had finally been beaten back by some unseen presence at Joe's side, flashed into her mind. Then, immediately, she thought about her recent fit of laughter, and about how much she was enjoying Karen's company, about how much she didn't want the fight to end and for Karen to leave. Suddenly, Joe understood. She had been holding back, not just in this heart-to-heart, -heart, but in their first one, too. It was so obvious now. It had taken her so long to realize because nothing like this had ever happened before. Attraction of any kind just wasn't something that Joe tended to experience, and she had always assumed that, when she finally did, there would be some sexual component to it. There wasn't one, so she hadn't recognized it. Now she did, and it felt like a weight had been lifted from her shoulders. How could she possibly not have known? How could she possibly not have realized that she had feelings for Karen? Joe looked around at each of the approaching forms. She felt liberated, like she had managed to free her mind from the oppressive grip of some secret enemy. She could see both of her heart-to-hearts with Karen in detail. She remembered something that she should have remembered before, something that changed everything and might even give her an edge. Time seemed to return to normal as Joe's perception snapped back in time with reality. The group of Karens was upon her, but this time, Joe didn't try to stand her ground and defend against them. Without even thinking, ignoring that she shouldn't have been able to, according to her own understanding of the technique, Joe shadow stepped. Just as the nearest Karen struck, Joe flickered out of view, moving so fast that not even Karen's sharp eyes could follow her. She rushed right past the attacking Karen, moving between her illusions in a streak of black and purple light. One by one, the illusions faded as Joe came into the briefest contact with them in turn. Joe skid to a stop across the length of the makeshift arena, turning to face the final Karen, the one that had attacked her first. That Karen, the real Karen, looked at Joe as if she were seeing her for the first time. So, she said, her typical smile returning to her lips, you have a bit more in you after all. Joe didn't say anything. She wasn't sure what to say. Now that she was aware of how she felt about Karen, she felt like she could give this fight her full attention again. It was true that she didn't want to hurt Karen, that she wanted Karen to stay there with her for as long as possible, but that didn't matter. Joe had seen firsthand how tough Karen was. It wasn't even like she intended to act on these feelings either way. Karen was still her enemy. She had still led an attack against Joe and her friends. Now that Joe knew what had been holding her back, it was simple to set that aside, at least for the time being. Joe decided to respond as she would to any other opponent in the same situation. I have more than a bit, she began. I'll admit, you threw me off a little back there. You held back even more than you did in our first heart-to-heart -to, -heart to lull me into a false sense of security. Then you confused me with that illusion barrage attack, she admitted making me think that your illusions are solid enough to each attack once, but I remember, back in our first heart-to-heart, -heart, when our punches crossed paths. You created an illusion and switched places with it at the last second, and I punched right through it, but your illusion punched right through me, too. If your illusions were capable of attacking, I would have felt that punch. How do you do it, then? Joe wondered. 
Do you switch places with every single one of the illusions one after the other and attack in place of each and every one? How much soul does that take? How much stamina? How much concentration? You must be exhausted, even more than you already look. I noticed that you, Karen marveled, were able to shadow step again, even though you aren't in the direct shadow of anything. Joe could tell that Karen was fishing for an explanation, but even Joe didn't have one. Sure, the shadow step was based on an ability native to Joe's specific soul, and might have uses that even Joe hadn't worked out yet, but Joe had still developed it up to this point. She had practiced it daily since doing so. She understood how it worked, so how was she able to use it now? Joe glanced around the area of the field, searching for an explanation, and she made quick note of the light from the moon that illuminated the scene of her battle with Karen, and realization struck. Joe looked down at the ground around her feet. Sure enough, she was standing in a direct shadow. With the moon directly above her, she was standing in the direct shadow that her own body cast upon the earth. Joe had somehow never considered that Shadow Step might work while within her own shadow. This opened up a whole new world of possibilities. She realized that she might even be able to modify the Shadow Step technique using this information, making it much more versatile than it already was. Actually, Karen said, I don't think I want you to tell me how you did it. Life can get pretty boring without mysteries to solve, and I have the entire rest of the fight to figure it out. She took up a ready stance again, and another Karen appeared much closer to Joe, shuffling forward, her fist held ready for a knockdown blow. And Joe didn't need to see the other Karen disappear to know that Karen had created an illusion that was mid-attack, and then switched places and stances with it. Seeing her opponent's fist coming right at her, Joe reacted without thinking. She shadow-stepped past Karen, and then turned on her heel, swinging her leg high and then snapping it downward like an axe. Just before it could hit, a second Karen appeared beside the first, facing Joe rather than facing away from her. In that same instant, the real Karen and the illusion must have once again switched places, because Joe's foot passed right through its target, and the second Karen lunged inside Joe's guard, aiming to drive her elbow into Joe's chest. Even one-handed, Joe deflected Karen's strike with very little effort, but as soon as she did, a second Karen appeared behind the first. The two Karens switched places, and the illusory Karen faded away while the real Karen pressed her attack, bypassing Joe's guard and slugging her right in the jaw. Joe stumbled back, and suddenly she was surrounded by four more Karens. They attacked in turn, and Joe, being unable to tell the real one from the illusions, was forced to dodge them all. She struggled to do so, fighting the strain her aura was putting on her after such a long fight. Was Karen having the same problem? Joe couldn't possibly know. With genuine effort, Joe managed to divide her focus between maintaining her aura and shadow stepping again. In less than an instant, she shifted position to appear outside the ring of attacking enemies. One of the Karens hit another by mistake, and they both faded from existence. That left only two more. Joe had a 50-50 shot at guessing which Karen was real, and looking at the two of them, she got the distinct impression that the one on the left was the real one. She decided to bet everything on this one last attack, revving up her soul as much as she could still stand with her stamina as low as it was, renewing her aura. She shifted forward and threw a punch with her full strength behind it, but as she did, acting completely on impulse, she shadow-stepped so that, rather than strike the left Karen, she struck the right Karen instead. Whether she had guessed wrong to begin with, or Karen had swapped places with her illusion at the very last second, Joe's gamble paid off. Her attack connected, knocking Karen over and sending her tumbling along the ground. She rolled to a stop, and her silvery aura finally collapsed. Meanwhile, Joe was able to hang on to hers, keeping it going for at least a little while longer. Slowly and painfully, Karen pushed herself back to her feet. The last dredges of her aura had protected her from any serious outward injuries, but it was clear from the way she moved that she had suffered damage. She was breathing heavily, and she didn't seem able to straighten up completely. You got me, Karen announced. You managed to see through my illusions. I'm spent. I doubt that I have enough strength left to fight you anymore, let alone you and the other dueling hearts. Do you mean? Joe began, but Karen cut her off, exasperated. Yeah, she said. Your teammates were able to defeat mine. I can sense it from here. It seems that you four have a real knack for doing the impossible. Joe couldn't believe it. It isn't even possible to describe how relieved she felt. She didn't want Karen to know how worried she had been, so she tried not to let it show, but she knew that she hadn't succeeded. Still, Karen didn't seem to notice. I surrender, she said. I think it's fitting, right? You surrendered in our first heart-to-heart -heart when faced with my entire team at once. Now I get to even the score. And you'll keep your word? Joe asked. And leave us alone? You won't just show up again in a week and try this again? Karen finally managed to rise to her full height as she turned away from her former opponent, walking away slowly. She looked back over her shoulder. Yeah, I'll keep my word. With one exception, we won't attack you again. But I still doubt that this is the last you've seen of the three of us. 
With that, she shot Joe one more of her familiar little smiles, and she disappeared. Joe felt the energy of the heart-to-heart -heart fade from the air all around her. She gasped as she finally allowed her aura to collapse, and she likewise collapsed, falling to her knees and clutching her injured arm. She needed to rest, but she knew that she couldn't. She didn't have time. Her friends had won, but she had no idea what their victories might have cost them. She had to find them and see if they needed her help. So, reluctantly, she rose to her feet again, and she shadow-stepped into the darkness of night.